seriously. In the premium protein challenge, Andy and Nares were a perfect match. This is the best fried prawn I have ever put in my mouth. And cooking savory and sweet chili dishes. I have a big problem. So our former beauty queen, Shamin. This is a bit like baby food. Wave this contest goodbye. Coming up. Hi, cooking for loved ones. <laughs> unleashes a torrent of emotion. Oh, there, but I can. Then fresh versus can. Sorry. Drops a competition bombshell. It's time to leave the Master Chef kitchen. Baby, <laughs> it just hits you, right? Like you actually have a chance. So it's a damn bloody good feeling. So as you guys know, all it takes is one small slip or a stumble, and you could be hanging up your apron. The pressure's on us as well. Sometimes we do wonder if it was us that made the wrong decision. For those reasons, we have to be doubly sure that the title of Master Chef Singapore goes to the right person. So, could you all turn around? Hey! <laughs> You're back! <laughs> we turn around and there's like the three Charlie's Angels, right? Charmin, Fiona and Alpha. Hello! <laughs> nice to be back. Although it's nice to see them again, but it's not nice competing with them again because we all know what their capabilities are. This is going to be scary. We're giving you a chance to fight your way back into the competition. You suckers have not had the best of me, so I'm back for good. To reclaim your aprons, you'll have to outcook each other as well as the five cooks in front of you. That's because we will immediately go into a double elimination challenge. <laughs> wow, top five. Then now we have top eight again. And then suddenly it becomes a double elimination. I'm like, die la, die la. Let's get into our very first challenge, designed by a very special guest. He's a globally renowned rock star chef, famous for off the charts menus. Please welcome back Chef Gagan Anand. <laughs> chef Gagan is back, and knowing his standards, I think it's not gonna be easy today. <laughs> Gagan, welcome back. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you guide our contestants in this next challenge. I think the biggest inspiration, the thing that has become a part of my success, is to look at where you come from, what you've been eating as a child, with your family, with your parents. There are stories that are like fireworks that you can surprise people with. Chef Gagan has created a special challenge that centers around family and the food that is closest to your hearts. So, if you look under your benches, there's a tablet. We reached out to your families to ask them to name a dish that is special to you and them. Hi, Hi, Mama. Hey, beautiful. I miss you so much. <laughs> Hi, Papa. Do your best and be the next Master Chef. One of my biggest motivations would be my daughter. We are rooting for you. Good luck. <laughs> I haven't seen my daughter for the past two years. I wish I can hug her, cook something for her to eat. They're there, but you can... The challenge, if you choose to accept it, watch it lor, kacang panjang. <laughs> Hope you can consider cooking our favourite dish, the wonton noodles. Remember the dish that you did when we were eating? Bread with lamb, rosemary and eggs? Get it's a dish that I did 10 years ago. Let's sweep them off their pellets like you did mine. I remembered how satisfying it was for her. That's a memory that, that's going to help me today. 
Birthdays are coming up and we are missing the cakes that you baked for us. Chef Gagan's challenge for you today is to create an elevated version of your family's favourite dish. Now there's this sudden additional pressure. I cannot go home on this dish because my parents might blame themselves. I want you to elevate it to a fine dining dish, but gives you a time machine to go back to that memory with your family. Food is something connected to your roots, to a very emotional moment. How do you elevate something so simple to something which is extraordinary on a plate? And remember, right here, right now, two cooks will be eliminated. Your 70 minutes starts now. I would do anything for my family. Every day, my kids tell me that they are very proud of me. It's something that pushed me in this competition. Feels good to be back. And best of all, I'm cooking something that my family loves. My dish today is kuah celok kacang panjang. Every time I make this, it makes my husband so happy. And I want to share the joy that he has for this dish with the judges. My family favourite is uh, shell out. The kid seems to want this all the time. Shell out is a combination of seafood, potato, corn, veggie. So I just want to make it look more sleek and do a potato dome and go over the seafood. Gagan, are you excited about what he's doing? Yeah, I want to see how he spins off this family sharing seafood. My tip is just be very soft on the oil temperature. It should not be too hot. All right. Because then it fries and it becomes too dark. Okay, thank you. I'm very happy that my family have actually chosen one of my favorite dish. This dish, Curry Devil, it takes me at least three hours to blend the rumpa smoothly. But I only have 70 minutes today to cook this dish. Fiona. Hi, Chef. How's the devil coming along? I see you made a mince. I'm going to wrap this inside the cabbage yeah. together with a bit of the prawn. You know, the devil has only got one colour. Is there any other way you're going to elevate it? Uh, this is a very tough dish to elevate. Even when we eat this dish in restaurants, it's in the same traditional way. Ready to crack my brain juice a lot. Mm. That's important. Remember what Chef Gagan said? Yes. So good luck to you. You don't have a lot of time. Thank you. Shame! You're feeling emotional today. I'm absolutely stressed because my son has chosen chocolate lava cake. I've never done it in one hour, so okay. I'm trying to just pull up whatever tricks I can okay. and get it going. I can see you've already started your ice cream. It's just regular milk that you've used, yeah? Um, regular milk as well as thickened cream. Oh my God, it's not the right milk. Is there a reason why you picked up a lactose? I, that's my, you know, I just so silly. You have time? Just use whatever you can find. Okay, okay. Contestants, you have 30 minutes to go. Make us cry over your family favorites. <sighs> Hello, Jonathan. Hi, Chef. So you're making this Chinese dish? Yeah, that is wonton noodles. To be very honest, I only made it once, so I'm really going with my instincts right now. Let's uh, see you make wonton noodles today, not one-time noodles. <laughs> hey, Shaman. Chef Gagan, I'm a wreck at the moment. Have you uh, made your ice cream? I've put it in the fridge. You're putting ice cream in the fridge? Is it in the fridge or in the freezer? Uh, that's the fridge. How could I be so, so, so careless? Ice cream needs to be frozen. What else? What else is going to go wrong today? I think the ice cream is good, but I think you need to put it in the freezer. Freezer, I'll do that. I'll do it. Short time. How are you going, Elliot? Uh, slightly behind. I love the smell. I've got two things in the oven. The okra chips, but it's slightly different, so it's going to look like the skills of a fish. 
the eggplant. Uh, I'm going to blend it and make it a puree with the laksa leaves. Is that a ginger flower? Yes, sir. Oh. I hope you can bring this out, beauty. Hopefully, yes. All right. Thank good you. luck. Okay, guys, bring the love of family into every dish. 15 minutes to go. My family's favorite dish is birthday cake. Can you eat in like 17 minutes? I'm gonna go home and score them, Sabo me. Happy birthday to you. Charlene, are we going to finish in time? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Is your buttercream? Yeah, it's a Swiss meringue buttercream. Yeah. It looks good though. I, I like the way you cook. You cook, cook like me. Because I never measure my bakery. You just put, and I like it. I like that rawness in you. I like the confidence. Keep it going. Okay. How do you feel about our Charlene? She's cooking what she's cooking, and she doesn't care it's a competition. Yes. She's fearless. The one that I'm worried about is Fiona. She's taking cabbage, yeah. blanched the cabbage. She's just going to take the sauce and just put it around. It's going to be too simple for me. Five minutes to go. Two of you will go. Don't let it be you. <sighs> Dying woman. <sighs> the, the cake is just falling apart. I added too much butter. I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's not right. Look in the oven and my potato is not setting, it's not crisping up. At this point, I need to pivot. Ooh. Oh. Two minutes to go, guys! All right, guys, your last 10 seconds. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two. One! Time is up! Hands up! Step away from your benches! Let's find out who channeled their emotions into elevating a family favourite. We'll start with... Jonathan. Today, I really feel like I'm out of my comfort zone. I'm very worried that the char siu is not good enough and that could potentially be sending me home. Usually, we get wonton noodles at the local coffee shop on Sunday mornings for breakfast. I want to channel that flavour into my dish. OK, let's try. I like the dish. It looks really, very fine dining. I love how you've added the crispy noodles to replace what I normally expect from crispy wonton. And I think that the basil adds a very nice floral note that balances the whole thing. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, chefs. I'm feeling so relieved. The comments that the judges give definitely make me feel like I've done my family proud. Next dish to the table, Andy. I call it out the shelf experience. Out the shelf or off the shelf? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the crab claw, the mussel, the lala has been raised in a chipotle uh, broth. The prawn has been deep fried together with the head, and in the middle is crispy grated potato. This should not be here because this can pierce you. There were too many things that are not wanted, like the shells. We had to go through all this. In fine dining, you can't do that. I felt that you got caught up in emotions today. Yeah. As a chef, you cannot let emotions take control of you. Because when people come to your restaurant, they expect you to be in control. Thank you. I knew that I'm not on my game today. And I know that... I have disappointed my family. Alpha. My husband, he loves this Boyanese vegetable soup dish. We do always eat it with rice, omelette and salted fish. Alpha, I'm sorry, but that doesn't look fine enough. I'm being honest. I would not expect in a fine dining restaurant a ball of lumpy rice in the middle of a plate. 
I would have this as a family meal, but fine dining, no way. Raw snake beans, it does have a very strong raw flavor. Deep fry to give it that extra texture. A very simple dish like this can be elevated to a totally different level. It's just thinking outside the box. Ilya. This dish, it's a snapper on eggplant puree, and then there's crispy okra as the skills, and uh, asam pedas broth. Ilya, every single element of it, spot on. A bit disappointed that you chose to recycle a few things you've done before. For example, the okra chips, the eggplant puree, you've also done it again today, but at least you improved on them, so I'll forgive that. Ilya, you think you can be a chef in a restaurant? I hope so. What if I tell you to take out the airplane and come and join me in the kitchen today? <laughs> I gotta check out the or my wife. You want to be master chef or you want to become a chef in my restaurant? Let me get this first and then I'll join you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, work for Chef Gaga, one of the best chefs in the world. It's an honor, but can I get the Master Chef trophy first? Then I'll join you. <laughs> Next to the tasting table is Fiona. I have trust in my own cooking. It will be unbelievable if I can get to the top four today. This dish is a family tradition. Today I take it into a cabbage roll. The filling is minced pork and some prawns. Fiona, the meat in your cabbage was not seasoned. The rumpa had a lot of bitterness, so a lot of that came through. Unfortunately, this dish wasn't that pleasant to eat. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm a bit frustrated with myself. I know that I shouldn't let emotions bother me in the kitchen. Naresh. The last time I cooked this dish for my wife was 10 years ago, man. And she still remembers the damn thing <laughs> after all these years. Naresh. This dish is so wild, I almost see a bit of Raj in it. Oh, God. <laughs> Despite how strange the combination is, you have seasoned every individual element well. So I'm going to say that I would actually go back for another bite. Thank you. All right, next up to the tasting table, Shaman. What did the family decide for you to cook in the kitchen today? A chocolate lava cake with ice cream, almond crumble, and a raspberry coulis. So, the texture for me was just all wrong. When you have too much oil, too much butter, and too much chocolate, the oil separates from the chocolate, and it lavered in the oven because it just didn't have a chance to create any structure. Your chocolate had actually melted into the dough. So then it's mushy, it's separated. Thank you. At the moment, my heart is sinking and sinking. I'm thinking I'm going home today. Charlene. I've called the cake Lean On Me because it's like a play on family, right? Yeah? <laughs> you can just imagine that my son was like clinging to me while I was trying to transfer the cake and it's like my family on a plate. <laughs> It's a chocolate layer cake. The buttercream on the outside is coloured with freeze-dried fruit powder. Charlene, can I be honest? Mm -hmm. That's one of the best cakes I had. I've never seen somebody using freeze-dried fruits in buttercream and not using colours. That's genius. I think you really lifted this competition to a level where I got inspired from you. Thank you for giving us a very good slice of cake. Charlene, you have a raw talent. And that talent, if polished, you will fly, girl. Thank you. What raw talent? I don't know. <laughs> I put up a cake he's willing to eat. It's good enough. Today, you are here on the stage. Your loved ones are home. And you're sacrificing your time not being with them. And I wanted you to be emotionally charged up to cook for this. Food is a very emotional subject. I want you to keep your focus 
And that will only make you a winner in challenges to come. Thank you very much once again, Gagan. Thank you. Today, one contestant outshone all the others. That was... Elia. Good job. The feeling is amazing. To be named Best Dish, it's, it's unbelievable. I... There were three cooks who didn't do nearly as well as the others. Shaman, Alpha, and Fiona, please come forward. I've come here, I've had a beautiful experience, and I tell myself, okay, sink in the moment, that's it. End of your journey. None of you made a clear-cut case to win back your apron. But the safe person is... Shaman. Alpha and Fiona, you both can walk out of here head held high because you're amazing, all right? But unfortunately, it's time to leave the MasterChef kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. I've learned quite a lot throughout this journey. How to elevate a dish, how to pick myself up, and I feel that I have grown stronger. I think the future will be pretty exciting. <laughs> I'm so proud to have made it this far. To be on MasterChef, to be in the top eight, every one of us are winners, and none of us are losers. Now we have six, but soon there will be only four. Welcome back. We see the three judges standing there. And on either side, there are the ice cooler boxes. It's either seafood or meat. We can't be going on a picnic. For this challenge, we've chosen an ingredient, which is a Singapore all-time favorite. Maybe crocodile, tiger. It's hard to crack, hard not to light, and hard to forget. It is the Prince of Pincers, Crab. You don't look happy, Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> crab is not my thing. My first thought is, oh, I'm going home today. But you know what's coming? There's always a twist. Here we have another of Singapore's favorite ingredients. And this one can also inflict a nasty injury if handled incorrectly. All I can think of is durians. Just for you guys, I'm going to stick my hand in here and pull one out. Ah! Behold, a fresh crab's cousin, the can crab! <laughs> <laughs> this elimination challenge will be broken into two 30-minute heat. You can cook a dish starring either fresh or canned crab in the first heat. 30 minutes and an ingredient that I'm not familiar with. It feels really impossible. The person with the best dish in Heat 1 will go straight to the deck. Whoa. With a guaranteed spot in the top four. It's been so long since I touched the deck, really. And I really want to go up there again. In Heat 2, you will cook with whichever crab option you did not choose in Heat 1. And the two worst dishes will send their makers home. 30 minutes, and you got to do it two times. It's like they torture you first, and then they torture you again. Elia, as a winner of round one, your advantage is you can choose to use either the fresh or canned in both heats. I don't want to be sent home on the first heat. I'm going all out on the first dish with the fresh crab. It's all or nothing. So get ready. Your first 30 minutes starts now. Let's do this. Guys, crab, fresh or canned, what would you do? Nothing wrong with canned crab. No. It's just, you know, you don't get the extraction of flavour from the shell. Correct. If it was me, I would use canned. It's fast, it's quick, yeah. and it's tasty. That's right. 
Shaman, how are you going? So you're going with fresh crab first, I'm going yeah? With fresh crab okay. first. I'm not very comfortable cooking the fresh crab, but I decide to up my game. My strategy is to make something delicious, which can be done quite fast. This is going to elevate my dish so that I gain a spot in the top four. I'm making a salted egg crab. Salted egg? Um, you're not going to pre-cook the crab? Everything's going to go into I'm your wok? Fry, I'm going to fry the crab first. Okay. Just be careful when you cook fresh crab, a lot of liquid tends to come out. Okay. Thank you. Fresh. I said fresh again. My plan is to do the easier one first, which is actually the canned crab. I have used canned crabs before. We have a crab cake. I know what kind of taste they can give out, and they are much faster in cooking. I feel that nobody is going to do an Indian version of a crab cake, so that may, you know, stand me out of it. Hello, Andy. Hi, hi, hi. I see some ketchup. I see some chili. So I'm making it a Singapore favorite chili crab. Uh, I'm going to go as big as I can. So I hope this Singapore chili crab is something that exceeds their expectations. OK, so how are you going to serve it? Um, probably on some sort of cracker. Mm, interesting. Good luck. Fresh or can, that's no time to waste. 15 minutes to go. Sorry, John. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh my god, guys, they are moving so quickly. Charmin yeah. is actually doing a salted egg crab, but she's not pre-cooking the crab. She's gonna fry she's it. She's just gonna fry it straight out. So I said to her, just watch the amount of liquid that comes out. Naresh yeah. is gonna do a crab cake. He's got the spices there. Yeah. It's whether he used enough of it. I'm just worried. It, they got 15 minutes. Now. I know, I 15 know. 15 minutes to do what you need to do with crab, that's very little time. Oh my god, I've never done this. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Chef. I want to make a crab scotch egg with a crab mayonnaise. And then I'm going to serve it with mango. Scotch eggs. It's just egg with meat around it. So you're using a fresh crab? I really want to get maximum flavour, and I think you can only get that when you still have the shell in the crab. I have never done scotch eggs before. And also, we don't have the luxury of time for this challenge, so I have to nail the egg on the very first try. So what could possibly go wrong? Everything. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. How are you going, Charlene? Not good. What dish are you making? Um, crab cake. You look really worried. Why is that? I don't like working with crab. But now you're using the canned crab, so you should be fine, right? It is, you? but I, uh, I don't know. La. OK, gonna move on. Make it the best crab cake ever. <gasps> I'm doomed. Ilya. Hello. You're the man with the advantage. Yes. Right? The plan is to do a smashing dish for this heat so that I don't have to cook in the next heat. You're going fresh crab first? Yes. I prefer the flavours of fresh seafood. So I'm going to do like a loud lode. Yes. And then the crab will be like the star. Okay. Sure. So I'm poaching the crab in milk. Okay. And then I'm using the milk for the loud lode. Okay. Yeah. Exciting. Good luck. Thank you. Guys, I don't care if you're moving forwards, backwards or sideways. Don't stop moving. You've got five minutes to go. You OK? Sorry. Why is it not working? With five minutes left on the clock, my scotch egg is still frying, my mayonnaise isn't done. OK, I have no time. So I have to scramble to the pantry, grab some mayo and grease the crab oil and hope that that's enough to wow the judges. Time to claw your way into the top four. You've got one minute. To go. Okay. Oh no, it has gone soggy. This crispy component has to be crispy and stay crispy. You, I gotta fly, man. I really gotta fly and make a few more, or my whole dish might be soggy. Right, your last ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Step away, guys. Woo! Step away. Let's taste your Heat One dishes, starting with you, Jonathan. I'm just hoping that my dish is good enough to win. I really don't feel confident that I will survive the second heat. I made a crab scotch egg. This is really my play on my go-to dish at dim sum places. Those prawn fritters with mango and mayonnaise. Jonathan, 
Yes, chef. Spectacularly beautiful dish. Executed so well. Crunchy on the outside, lightly salted on the inside. Sweetness comes through with the little bits of mango, and that creamy mayo just brings it all together. Brilliant. Right. Thank you. Up next, Shamin. I was wondering, did I do the right thing because I chose to cook a whole crab and have I elevated it enough? I've made the salted egg yolk crab. I've eaten salted egg yolk prawns and chicken, but I've never had the crab version before. Shamin, great effort. You may not have given us the best version of salted egg crab, but you've actually made a salted egg crab that can rival some of the better versions outside. And for someone making it for the first time, that is a massive accomplishment, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Andy. I cook Singapore chili crab on deep fried rice paper for the crunch. Andy. I don't like chili crab. I find it overly sweet. It's gooey and the canned tomatoes. I don't like it. But this is rumpa chili crab. It's not only cooked well, but has got all the balance of the different ingredients, which makes this the best chili crab I have eaten. Well done, Andy. Thank you very much. To make someone who does not like that dish like that dish, I think I deserve a standing ovation. Naresh! So this is crab cake with a spicy cashew coconut sauce. Naresh, I think you gave us today a perfectly plumped crab cake. It was all about the crab. I do, however, wish you would have introduced some refreshing elements inside the crab cake itself. Something to kind of freshen up the inside would have been an exceptional dish. Thank you. You are next, Charlene. I picked the canned lump crab and I made crab cakes. <laughs> I used a homemade mayonnaise, chives, coriander and assorted spices and then served with a pickle fennel. Charlene, in the battle of crab cakes, you brought us better ancillary flavours with the pickle, with the stuff inside, but the crab cake texture itself was a bit of a letdown. Narash brought us a better crab cake itself. If two of your dishes combined and joined forces, that would have been the best damn crab cake dish ever. Thank you. Next up, Ilya. Today, I used the fresh crab poached in milk, and then I used the poaching liquid to make the lemak sauce. The broth is actually very light. It's very lightly flavoured with coconut. Very clever to actually poach your crab in milk, because it gives it that added sweetness as well. But I would have liked a little bit more seasoning. That would have brought out a bit more flavour from your rumpa. Thank you. Thank you. is not a lot of time, but you all did a remarkable job. The first cook to book their spot in the semi-finals with flawless execution is... Jonathan. Oh! Holy <laughs> I'm in the top four. And one step closer to being the champion. Jonathan, that was a spectacular dish. Well done. Thank you, chefs. Another dish that has blown us away is by Andy. Andy, beautiful textures. Everything was so complimentary. That's what Singapore chili crab should taste like. Thank you. You both very much deserve a spot in the top four. So congratulations. You can both head up to the deck. <laughs> Unbelievable. In the next heat, you have a 50-50 chance to claim a spot in the semi-finals. 
This is a double elimination. The stress levels have just gone higher. It's a do or die situation at this point of time. This is a double elimination. Apart from Ilya, you must now change your crap option. This time, I'm gonna be a lot more riskier. Your 30 minutes starts now. Woo. Let's go, guys, come on. Yo, why must my pants fall now? Calm down, bro, calm down. Okay, the second heat. Charlene and Narash, they have to use fresh crab this time because they use canned crab in the first heat. That's right. Shaman has to use canned. Right. And Ilya, we don't know what he's going with at right. this time. Ilya. Right. So what have you chosen? Second heat. I'm going fresh again. Okay. Because I think the flavors will be a bit better. I'm still using fresh crab. My plan is to make a better dish than the first one and not make the same mistakes. So I'm going to do like a jamput jamput okay. with sambal to miso sauce. I don't see your crab. You know. yeah. Where is it? After the, the, the dried chilies are done, which is soon, I'm going to put the crab back in. You're going to poach it again? Yes, yes, yes. Time is my biggest problem because I've been known for moving slowly in the kitchen. So I'm going to the safer route, which is familiar. Yank it up. Just yank it up. In heat two, I am trying to conceptualize a recipe, but I'm not able to think of anything to cook. Shaman? Hey, Chef. What dish are you making? See some pasta there? I thought I'll just make crab with a mild, creamy, garlic-infused pasta with a bit of parmesan okay. cheese. I don't know what kind of flavor I'm going to work with. I do not know how the crab meat is going to taste. I'm like, OK, I'll just go with the pasta. Italians would flip in their graves when they okay. hear about seafood and cheese, but I think the judges don't mind. Thank you. Guys, take the nation's favorite crustaceans all the way to the top four. 15 minutes to go. Bro, are you going to serve that with the shell? I don't know. If not, you just throw the whole damn thing in the pot. No waste time. Narash, how are you going? It looks like you've done this before. Uh, no, I've never, I've never done this before. I've never broken down the crab. I don't know why. I'm, I think the best way to handle this crab is just go for it. Break it down, do it quickly. So, what dish are you making us? I'm going to make a crab curry, something that I've eaten, but not many places do this. I'm going to add eggplant into it so it absorbs the curry. I don't have a recipe, so I want to just trust on my palate and try to make the best damn crab curry that judges have ever tasted. Crab curry, eggplant, sounds right up my alley. I hope it's up yours too. Thank you. So I'm going to see Ilya, and you know, I thought he was going to use canned to be safe. No, he's using fresh. He's doing a play on jumpot jumpot. I think it might work. It all boils down to his rumpa. Rumpa, yeah. The last time his rumpa wasn't fried enough, and I hope he takes our advice and cook it long enough to extract all that flavor. His rumpa is still blending. Does he have enough time? I yeah. checked in on Darish, right. and what he's cooking speaks right to my heart. Okay. It's a crab curry with eggplant. He says eggplant because it really soaks up the flavor. I completely agree. So yes. that sounds smashing. Moving to the front, we got Shaman. And she's using dry pasta. Yep. She's doing a creamy sauce with crab and some chili and some garlic. Although crab is light, I don't want a heavy, creamy pasta because you totally overshadow the crab, right? Come on, guys. Come on. Ten minutes more. Ten minutes. Ten minutes, guys. Charlie, yeah. tackling your crab. Yeah. Tell me, what are you doing? Some kind of crab bihun soup. Have you ever cooked with crab before? No. I can't deal with the raw crab in 30 minutes. I've seen my dad chop up a crab, but I've never had to do it. <gasps> Going home now. Hey, just watch that you don't overcook the crab. Give us bags of flavor, okay? Okay, I try. Five minutes, guys. Snap, snap, let's go. Five minutes left, nothing is ready. The sambal is still in the stove. The oil is still not hot enough. I'm freaking out. 
Ilya, you need to turn up the heat. It's full, bro. I just have my plate there and there's nothing. Everything is a mess. Uh, I just don't know what to do, man. Make it fast and make it crab-tivating! You've got one minute to go! Oh, man, one minute. Hey, Ilya, you have to throw it in, already. Right? Come on. Ilya, hang in there. One minute left. My fritters is still in the oil, bubbling away. It's not browning. I'm trying to base it. Faster cook, faster cook, faster cook. I don't think his fritters are going to be ready. Eh? God, this is not going to plan. Ilya, taste your sambal. Yeah, I did, bro. Your final ten, ten seconds! seconds. <gasps> Let's find out who will be joining Jonathan and Andy in the semi-final. We'll start with Charlene. I've made a crab bihun soup. It's just <laughs> bihun and crab soup. Charlene, presentation 10 out of 10. But the chicken stock flavour is giving too much competition to the crab flavour. There's a lot of umami coming from the dried seafood. It's good because you add body, but it's bad because you detract from the crab. Thank you. Next up, Shamin. I've made the creamy spaghetti with crab claw. Shamin. You know, a dash of cream is often really lovely, but I think what you've done here, it's the whole sauce is creamed and lemon, so it's very overpowering. The sweetness of the crab doesn't come through, despite the fact that you've actually got quite a lot of crab claw in here. I expected more. Thank you. The rest. So I've done a crab curry. It's something that my late father-in-law used to do. He passed away 17 years ago, and I do not know a recipe, so it's just those memories that I have. Naresh, for someone who has not cooked with crab before and does not have a recipe, you're either a damn good liar or a damn good cook. I think you're a damn good cook. It's an excellent dish, Naresh. Your father-in-law would be very, very proud. Thank you, Naresh. Thank you. It's a super nice feeling. Like, it's been a while since I smiled like that. <laughs> Ilya, please bring a dish up. My dish is like a rush mess. If I could hide underground and just put the plate there and just hide, I would have done it, man. This is what I call crab fritters with sambal. You know, Ilya, everything on this plate here, except for the crab here, yeah, is inedible. No extraction of flavours, undercooking. This is not Ilya. I'm kicking myself here wondering why you didn't just use the canned crab. You would have been able to start everything a bit earlier. A lot of wasted opportunities here, I see. Ilya, can you see how disappointed the three of us are? So I was very excited about this, but it didn't quite get there for me. Thanks, Ilya. I'm really annoyed with myself. After all the looseless streak, getting top dishes and whatnot, and then you you give this kind of nonsense. This is it, lad. This is the ticket home. You guys, the best crab dish of heat number two. It channeled family history on the plate. And it was your dish, Naresh. Good job, bro. Good job. Good job. That leaves us with a not so easy decision. Charlene, Shamin, and Elia. Please, come forward. No matter what happens from here, I want you guys to remember that you beat out hundreds of other cooks in Singapore who wanted to be in your shoes right now. So for that, much to be proud of. Sadly, only one of you can move forward. And by the barest of margins, Charlene, you are safe. 
Charmin, every time you cooked in this kitchen, you brought us just bags and bags of flavor. You know, you cook from your heart, and a lot of it centers around your family. Thank you for touching our hearts. Ilya, you're the only contestant to make it through the first half of this competition without featuring in a single elimination round. You won the Food Scraps Challenge, and your elevation of your Asam Padas impressed none other than Chef Gagan. Ilya, you really gave me some of my favorite dishes so far. In my opinion, no one in Singapore has elevated Malay cuisine to the same caliber that you've done. Right, Shaman and Ilya, it's been an absolute joy having you both in the MasterChef kitchen. It's now time to say goodbye. Thank you, guys. Leaving without the title is a bit disappointing. I think my future in food will be very exciting because I feel like now I have the proper leverage to start something. Chef Gagan, if you're watching this, you offer me a job, I want it. Next time, cooking a two Michelin star menu. Come on, let's go, let's go. In the toughest ever passage to the finale. I'm really doing everything I can, but it's still not enough. Then the home cooks are in the crosshairs. After two stars, there is really only one way to go of a three Michelin star maestro. Someone's going home today and it's not gonna be me.